An Aryan brother is without a care. He walks where the weak and heartless won't dare. And if by chance he should stumble or lose control, his brothers are there to help reach his goal. For a worthy brother, no need is too great. He need not ask, the fulfillment's his fate. For an Aryan brother, death holds no fear. Vengeance will be his, through his brother still here. For the brotherhood means just what he implies. A brother's a brother, till that brother dies. And if he is loyal and never lost faith, in each brother's heart there will always be a place. So a brother I am, and will always be, even after my life is taken away from me. I'll lie down content, knowing I stood, head held high, walking proud in the brotherhood. People that are older and know what time White it is, made. it's just business. Yeah. Greetings and welcome back. It's your host, Gabe Morales. We've been covering Aryan Brotherhood members over the past six decades or so. Today, I'm going to cover the rest of the letters, as in validated gang members. As I stated in the beginning of this series, everybody that I've mentioned here has been documented by at least one agency as being an Aryan Brotherhood member or associate. Some of you can disagree on who was actually made and who is just an associate, but I think most of you have found this information to be mostly credible, and I believe it is, or I wouldn't even put it out. Don't want to sound too critical, but I've heard other individuals on other channels who don't sound like they did their homework and sometimes sound like they're just winging it. I'll start off with Eddie Bond, who was a well-known convict in the CDC system long before there ever was an Aryan Brotherhood. Eddie Bond is stated to be one of the co-founders of the Aryan Brotherhood in 1967. As stated before, the Aryan Brotherhood is stated to have started at San Quentin in January 1967 after Robert Holderman was killed by black convicts. It is my understanding that Eddie Bond was housed at Folsom Prison at that time and then organized the white cliques into being Aryan Brotherhood members also in support of their San Quentin brothers. And he was pegged as being an AP general at Folsom Prison. I mentioned him in several previous episodes, such as when I talked about Red Fenton and Gino Mayer. When I covered the November 26, 1962 kidnapping of the Bethel Choir that had just finished their first hymn in Folsom's prison chapel. And the three are seen here in this picture when they were given a press conference to address their grievances with the warden and with CDC. I showed that Eddie Vaughn was first locked up under CDC under A number as an Alpha 24437 and was born in 1934. I have documentation that in March of 1962, he stabbed an inmate Benny Slankard to death at the California Medical Facility at Vacaville. BMF had opened in 1955. However, I believe that this death, seven years later, was the first documented murder that occurred at the facility. Eddie Vaughn was charged in that case, but pled innocent, and I shall beat it. In June 1967, he stabbed his cellmate at Folsom Prison to death, a Delbert Joe Blow. But for that case, Eddie Vaughn was convicted of assault with a deadly weapon. Vaughn got sentenced to death in 1968 for the stabbing death of a prisoner named Conrad Becker. The prosecution also introduced evidence that Vaughn had been involved in the earlier deaths of inmates Benny Slackard and Delbert Joe Blow, even though the Slacker case had been reduced down to prisoner in possession of a deadly weapon. On May 7, 1968, prison officials stated that Eddie Vaughn and Ronald Lancaster had assaulted Officer L.A. Bissett with a deadly weapon. Evidently, this assault took place around 8 a.m. in the morning. It is stated that Vaughn and Lancaster jumped Corrections Officer Bissett, and in the ensuing struggle, Bissett suffered lacerations to his cheek. It is stated that Eddie Vaughn, armed with a shank, threatened to kill Bissett unless he and Lancaster were given the keys to all the cells. But... Evidently, Officer Bissett refused, and Vaughn and Lancaster released him before they kill inmate Conrad Becker. However, during Vaughn's trial for his life, his fellow convict from the 1962 caper, Red Fenton took the stand and claimed that it was he who had stabbed Conrad Becker to death. In 1974, California Supreme Court upheld Vaughn's sentence, but commuted it to life in prison, since California had abolished the death penalty two years earlier. You can find more on that court case online. And this is a very important detail that I don't think I mentioned before, but Eddie Bond and his buddy Ronald Lancaster had assaulted a Folsom guard in an effort to get to convict Fred Castillo, who later on would become affiliated with the Nuestra Familia prison gang. As I stated many times before, these prison gangs never forget. And later on, Eddie Bond passed word to Mexican Mafia member Nico Velasquez 
an AB member, Tank Noah, that he wanted Castillo dead. Mosca Castillo then was killed by Aryan Brotherhood member Fed Mendren and Aryan Brotherhood associate slash Nazi member Donald Hale in 1972. There was a John Von Moose who I show was out of West Covina in the San Gabriel Valley. It's my understanding that he had two tattoos on his knuckles, one that said love and one that said hate. I show that he was housed in CDC under C number, as in Charles, 56727. He then was moved to the feds under BOP number 79326-012. And I understand was very loyal to Aryan Brotherhood shot caller Barry Mills. I show he was housed at Marion in 2004, but then was hit in 2005 at Marion. I then show he was housed at the ADX in the year 2006. He remained in the BOP until February 2015, and by that time had been listed as a dropout. There was a Donald Benai Ward, who I understand did time in Oregon DOC as well as Arizona DOC and California in the 1970s through 1980s. I then show he was caught with guns in 1982 and eventually was sent to the feds in 1987 under BOP number 17074-008. I then show he was released in 1989 but came back after he committed at least eight robberies and supposedly was given 21 years. But I'm unsure of his current status. There was Kenneth Waterman, a.k.a. Tree, who was out of Oakland. I showed that he was convicted of a robbery case in 1962 and given A numbers in Alpha 72922. I showed he was caught with a shank in 66, but a parole by 1970. He then returned on a parole violation that same year to CMF Vacaville. He paroled again by 1977, but then was involved in a homicide of a Ricky Hell with Little Joe Rourke and he ended up testifying against Little Joe. He then was convicted of a bank robbery in 1979 and sent to El Reno under BOP number 72085-011. He then was released in 1984, but committed robberies in 1986, returned to the BOP, was released in 1990, but was housed in Joliet, I believe Illinois' DLC, in 1991. He then paroled in 1992, and I show was involved in an incident with Chicago police in the year 2000, when I lost track of him. There was Joseph, a.k.a. Dazzy, a.k.a. Broadway Joe Waters, who I show was a very early Aryan Brotherhood member at San Quentin when he had B number 21244. I believe he got the name Broadway Joe from Joe Namath, who was a New York Jets star quarterback during that time era. Understand that he was well respected in the AB and a sharp dresser. Mentioned Joe Waters earlier in this episode when I talked about Eddie Vaughn. And as I stated, Silent Mike Carmichael and Joe Waters were said to have been involved in the attempted murder of Eddie Balch in April 1976 because he had a rat jacket. But I'm unsure what happened to him after the 1970s. There was Jason William Weaver, a.k.a. Beaver, who I show was out of San Diego County. Now, I've had some people state that he used to be a crip, but like many others, that could be total BS by people who just don't like the guy. Normally, that would not be allowed with white gangs. I show that he hit CDC in May of 1995 with J number, as in John, 63453, after he was convicted of a murder case. I show he had an assault on prisoner in 2006. And then, in 2015, he was accused, along with Waylon Pitchford, of killing longtime BGF member Hugo Yogi Pinnell in August of 2015. According to CDC reports, Weaver stabbed Pinnell 19 times while Pitchford held him down. Pinnell was rendered unconscious and taken to a New Folsom infirmary where he died of his injuries. Understand that after Yogi was killed, as many as 70 inmates were involved in a riot and that a total of 29 inmates were hurt in that incident, and 15 inmate manufactured weapons were found. To put down that incident, officers fired approximately 160 rounds of non-lethal munitions. Understand that Hugo Pinel's daughter sued the Department of Corrections in 2017, stating that they had set her father up. I show that Jason Beaver Weaver is currently housed at Sadef in Corcoran. There was Robert Chuko Windicker, who was out of Oakland, but I believe also had ties to Hawaii, or at least he was said to be half Hawaiian, which, as we say here, is Kanaka Maoli. I'm starting to learn a little bit of Hawaiian, but mostly a lot of pigeon, having lived here now off and on for 10 years. Like, nah, we never did much last night, bro. Just drank some green ones and talk story, which basically means, no, we didn't do much last night. We just drunk some Heineken's and told a lot of war stories. Understand that Chuka Windicker was present 
at Soledad when the race war kicked off and three black convicts were killed in January 1970. In that incident, Billy Buzzard Harris and Harper Harper, all Aryan Brotherhood members, were also involved. When he had B number, as in Bravo, 12961. In addition to having problems with the blacks, he was on NF hit list for many years, and I've seen a couple of those, so I know that to be so. In 1975, he testified in a court case against the president, stating that CDC instigated a lot of these racial attacks. There was Glenn, a.k.a. Speedy West, who I believe was out of Louisiana. He was said to have been an Aryan Brotherhood member or associate when he had BOP number 18599-148. It is said that West had killed an inmate at USP Lompoc in the early 1990s, but got away with it. And he was named in the 2002 RICO case against the AB and testified for the prosecution. Also involved in that case was Aryan Brotherhood informant Danny Weeks. In addition to West and Weeks, former ABs Kevin Roach and Brian Healy all agreed to cooperate for the prosecution and testified against their former Aryan Brotherhood members. There was Kenneth Old Folks Wilkes, who I discussed in the Spotsburg episode. I understand he was an Aryan Brotherhood member in the 1970s and had been time at Folsom Prison. And I believe it was he with inmate Van Persel who stabbed Eddie Balch in the case that I previously mentioned in this episode, whereby he snitched on them and Eddie Bond ordered Silent Mike Carmichael and Joe Waters to stab him again. Understand then he was released from prison by 1980 and was involved in a robbery in 1981 in a jewelry store with Spotsburg. Supposedly in this incident, they took a huge gold nugget. Later on, Spotsburg was found dead, and it is my belief that it was old folks that knocked him off. But what comes around goes around, and he ended up being killed in West Sacramento not too long after that with Patrick Dalby after they were involved in an incident with a former Folsom prison guard named Ken Stenholm in February 1981. There was Larry Witzig, who was a very early Aryan Brotherhood member when he had B number 16969. And I'm not sure what happened to him in later years. However, I believe he had a son, Larry Witzig Jr., who was convicted of a murder case in Tulare County and hit CDC in 2008. And I show is currently incarcerated at Folsom State Prison. Understand he also had a brother that was considered to be even more dangerous than him, named Psycho Leo, who was killed in a bank robbery in 1976. There was Terry Wright, who I understand was out of Florida, and was incarcerated in the BOP under number 11260-018. understand that he was an Aryan Brotherhood associate and I believe was a member of the Dirty White Boys, which is a prison gang in the BOP that often supports the ABs. I show that he was found with Shanks at Marion in 1999 and then was housed at the ADX. But I show was released in December 2016. And lastly, we have Ronald Ronegade Yandel, who is out of Cocoa County, who has long been involved in Aryan Brotherhood politics. I remember him from New Folsom Prison when I first started, and even back then, he was known as being a very violent and angry individual, especially towards CDC officials. He's always hated them. And I remember after James Redman Redenbaugh was shot by CDC at Tehachapi in April of 1987, right after I graduated the academy, Staff told me that Runnegade, Oxrufo, Cornfed, Schneider, and many other Aryan Brotherhood members were directed by Wendell Blue Norris to wage all-out war on staff. I show he was arrested on a dope case in 1991, and I believe was present when Tupi Hernandez got hit at the L.A. County Metro Jail during the Mexican Mafia Rico case in the mid-1990s. When he had BOP number 85276-011. And I believe was sponsored by none other than longtime Aaron Brotherhood Commissioner Barry Mills in the federal system. I show that he was released from the BLP in March of 2001. I show then he was returned to custody in CDC in 2004 under V numbers in Victor 27927. I then show he was housed at Corcoran Shoe, a believe beef facility as well as Pelican Bay. Understand that he okayed Donald Popeye Maza for Aryan Brotherhood membership before Popeye paroled, and before he actually got his body, which, like I've said many times before, is usually a requirement to gain your rock, such as the one that is displayed on Yandel's left front shoulder. I am told that Maza reminded again of his responsibilities by Yandel and told to hit Thumper Trip, but didn't, 
and kept making excuses. And in spite of all the P9 members that practically worshipped Donald Popeye Mazza like a god, that were putting in work for the ABs, understand that Renegade later said that him sponsoring Popeye was a big mistake. It was well known that Yandel used a smuggled cell phone to communicate with his supporters and to help run Aryan Brotherhood business. I'm now going to play a clip that I believe was recorded on one of those contraband cell phones. I will say this, Yandel makes a good point that a lot of the drugs in contraband is smuggled in by staff. It is well known by many convicts as well as correctional peace officers like myself that have been on the inside that there is a lot of corruption, not all, but enough to be ashamed of. And unfortunately, a lot of that is covered up by the corrections union. And there's also abuse by some guards. I've talked about that on previous videos, such as my Green Wall video. And I believe that Hector Bravo has also addressed corruption on his channel at the administration level, all the way to headquarters, Sacramento. This is what I say now. Any group of people, any opposition, are actually uh, promoting hate towards anybody else is because um, it, it, it's, it's, they're trying to gain support for whatever agenda they have. See, I just heard about the bust in one of the prisons that in one month they found 50 pounds of heroin when there was no visits. See, and this is just exactly what I was talking about, uh, trying to warn people in the last video clip about them creating, uh, facilitating um, these crimes, and then they pick who they want, they target. So they're facilitating all this, they're choosing different people, and then the people like us, now, now they'll, they want to execute us, so they just, they pick who they believe they, they want to get rid of. So they're, they're facilitating all this, and then they got the, uh, the pick of the draw, who they want to snap, because they're the one that are controlling all this. That's exactly what I was trying to say. So that, that paperwork that just come out, that information that's come out, is exactly what I'm trying to say. That's why I'm, and you, like I said, I'm, me and my co defendants are going to find a way out of this without a doubt, but I'm just, we're trying to put people up on it so uh, other people, the other prisoners don't get caught up in that, that, that there, there is, there is some manipulation going on and they're creating all this. They're, they're 28. This date changes only when there is an update to the following visiting status. All visiting status is subject to change without notification. Facility C is on a modified visiting program. There will be no visiting for African Americans. 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 Um, this creates a, a culture in which prisoners are forced to identify um, against other prisoners, identify with a, a particular group, and be punished and rewarded as a group. Mm -hmm. um, but that that isn't successful for our society. It was just a prison culture back then. But people and times change. Prison is not about street gangs. It's about race. The Hispanics are cut in half. You've got the northerners and the southerners. And trust me, they're always at war. With the blacks, you've got a whole mixture of gangs who pretty much forget their beefs and unite with the Asians and the Pacific Islanders. Don't bother trying to figure out who's who. They all hate you. Then you've got the skins in the woods. Nearly all the whites follow the Aryan Brotherhood who run the show. And he was housed in New Folsom Prison in 2016 and was charged in the 2019 RICO case. Yandel made a lot of people scared as he was known to have a very short temper. For instance, Jason Powder Cummings, notorious YouTuber, spoke a lot about Yandel in some of his videos. And then, all of a sudden, his interview stopped. Except for him coming on and saying that he exaggerated or outright lied on a lot of his stories. Especially on a certain YouTube channel. Is just try to share my experience to the best of my ability. But now that I'm on my own channel, I can make my own decisions and I can do things the way I want to. And this is my very first video opening up. And like I said, I got your messages through Instagram, and I'm not trying to be involved in those subpoenas. And I, I, I hear you clearly. And hopefully, you know, once you hear this story and hear what I have to say, that maybe you guys can have a little bit of respect about what I'm doing, you know. And so I'm going to change. I'm going to change some things 
on this channel, and I still will make it clear again that all the stories that I was telling on stories written by current prisoners and isolated minds, it was not, that was not 100% accurate stories. Ronald Ronegade Yandel was just convicted with multiple other Aaron Brotherhood members. And so then the question would be, who would take his and Danny Troxell's place? David Chance recently paroled. So you might ask, who's going to be on the Aryan Brotherhood Commission in California? Who would take their place? Well, they've always found a way, and I'm sure they already have some people in the mix, as well as reorganizing the Federal Commission and Councils. And so, that's all I have for the Aryan Brotherhood Roll Call Series A through Z. I hope you enjoyed these segments and that you continue watching. I'm going to take a little break and cover some other subjects that have been on the back burner for a while. But I'll be back soon with a new series on Black Gorilla family members A through Z since the 1960s. For now, this is Gabe Morales signing off for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. An Aryan brother is without a care. He walks where the weak and heartless won't dare. And if by chance he should stumble or lose control, his brothers are there to help reach his goal. For a worthy brother, no need is too great. He need not ask, fulfillment's his fate. For an Aryan brother, death holds no fear. Vengeance will be his, through his brother still here. For the brotherhood means just what he implies. A brother's a brother till that brother dies. And if he is loyal and never lost faith, in each brother's heart there will always be a place. So a brother I am and will always be, even after my life is taken away from me. I'll lie down content, knowing I stood, head held high, walking proud in the brotherhood. People that are older know what time it is, but it's just business. Yeah.